Inshallah today I want to pay my respects to Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu and the reason is because the historians they say on the 20th of Muharram Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu passed away Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu is a very famous companion mashallah our brothers are named after him and I reckon if we were to ask our youngsters as well name some companions I think they'll definitely be able to name Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu. He was called Habshi because he was from Habsha. He was from Ethiopia. And we all know that he was tortured, he was punished. But even then, he remained very, very strong and he held on to patience. And he was the Muaddin. He was the one that would call the, the call to prayer, the Adhan. He would call the Adhan. And he took part in Badr, Uhud, all these different, different battles. He was always with the Prophet Wasallam. If we look at the Ahadith, MashaAllah, we can learn and, and we can read about the virtues of Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu. The Prophet Wasallam, he said that there were four that progressed. You could say like they beated the rest. So the Prophet Wasallam said, it was me from the Arab world and Suhaib from Rum, Salman from Persia and Bilal from Habsha. These are the four that progressed, they beat the rest. The Prophet Wasallam, it was at the time of Fajr, the Prophet Wasallam said, Bilal, what do you do that I heard your footsteps in Jannah? And Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu, he said, the action that comes to mind is that whenever my wuzu breaks, I do my wuzu and then I recite or I perform units of tahiyyatul wuzu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Bihada, this is why. So I just went to Norway for a couple of days and mashallah, my wife's maternal uncle, every day he goes to the masjid at one o'clock Zohar is at 3 o'clock there and he was mentioning that I go, I read my Tahiyatul Wuzu, Tahiyatul Masjid and I stay in the Masjid till Asr. So mashallah they have a get together as well and uh, he reads the Quran as well, two rukus and with translation as well. So inshallah we should also make this effort that when we come to the Masjid, if it's not the Makru time, we should offer the two units of Tahiyatul Wuzu if we're doing Wuzu here offer the two units of Tahiyatul Masjid as well. Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu out of happiness when he would remember this that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa heard my footsteps in heaven he would he would cry out of happiness and look at the rank of Sayyiduna Bilal Omar Amir al Mu'minin, he used to say Abu Bakr our leader freed our leader Bilal radiallahu anhu so Omar used to say that Bilal is our leader. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave Sayyiduna Bilal the title Sayyidul Muaddinin. He's a leader of all the Muaddins, mashallah. So Umayya bin Khalf, you all know, he was a staunch enemy of the Muslims. He would make Bilal radiallahu anhu lie down on scorching sand at noon when the heat of the sun was unbearable. In the books is mentioned that there were about seven that openly declared the Islam. And there were some, the Prophet ﷺ, because of his uncle Abu Talib, the Kuffar, they, 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 they never attacked the Prophet ﷺ, really brutally. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr anhu, he was saved because of his tribe. Okay, there were occasions when Sayyiduna Abu Bakr anhu got beaten up really bad. They left him unconscious. But I'm talking generally. But you know, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, he had no one. They used to torture him so much. And uh, they used to put this massive rock on his chest and say, you're going to die like this, under this rock. The only way out is if you denounce Islam. But Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, he used to say, Ahadun, Ahadun. One, one referring to Allah. They'd put a rope around his neck and they would drag him in the streets as well. This is what they would do. They would whip him until they would get tired. 
and then they would take turns because they would get tired. This is the torture that Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu had to experience. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he saw this and he either exchanged, so he had a slave who was from among the mushrikeen and he said, okay, you take him. Or in the books is mentioned that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu either gave five or he gave 40 awkiyas. Umayyah bin Khalf, he said, if you had given me one, I would have sold Bilal to you. And Sayyiduna Abu Bakr said, Bilal is such a great companion. He's such a great individual. If you had charged 100, I would have given you 100 for Bilal. So my brothers, when the Muslims got permission to migrate to Medina, Bilal radiallahu migrated and he fell ill. And during those days, Medina was called Yathrib. What was it called? Yathrib. And it was called Yathrib because of plagues. And Bilal radiallahu anhu, he went to Medina, he fell ill. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for Medina. He said, Oh Allah, make Medina beloved to us like Makkah is beloved to us. In fact, make him more beloved to us than Makkah. The other dua Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this dua as well for the Abu Hawa as well. That make the environment, the atmosphere, the water, make it all healthy. Lift all these illnesses from here and difficulties and also bless the rizq and the sustenance in Medina. So Bilal radiallahu anhu during the battle of Badr you all know that he got hold of Umayyah bin Khalf and, and he killed Umayyah bin Khalf. And in the books it's mentioned that Umayyah bin Khalf wasn't the real master of Sayyiduna Bilal. There was this, this woman who you could say she was the one that was the owner of Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu and uh, this uh, Umayyah bin Khalf was her agent. So this was Umayyah bin Khalf and uh, when namaz, when the time came for namaz, the time came for prayer, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, how can we invite the believers for prayer? Some said, ring a bell, some said raise the flag, some said someone should invite, shout out loudly. What happened was there was this companion called, called Abdullah bin Zaid. When he went to sleep, he was taught the words, the lyrics of Adhan. And then he went running to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Inshallah, this is a good dream and uh, what to do? What you need to do is go to Bilal, you say the words to Bilal and Bilal, he will say them out loudly because he's got a louder voice than you. And in the book, some say that Abdullah bin Zaid, he wasn't feeling well. So this is how, mashallah, Azan uh, started. And when Umar radiallahu anhu, he heard this, when he heard the first Azan, he came running and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I had the same dream. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this has just strengthened what Abdullah bin Zaid has just said. Bilal anhu, upon occasion, he was maybe in the toilet and it was time for Fajr Azan and he missed it. Prophet ﷺ told Zaid bin Harith to give the Fajr Azan. So Bilal anhu, he came to give the takbir as normal. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, no, let Zaid Zaid give the Adhan, whoever gives the Adhan should say the Takbir. And uh, also is mentioned in the books that before Fajr Adhan, Bilal radiallahu anhu would always make a dua. So he'd make a dua, uh, in, in, he'd go to the roof of this house and, and those in the home, they would hear him. So he would always make this dua uh, before Fajr Adhan, he would say, Oh Allah, I praise you and I seek your assistance that the Quraysh, they establish your deen. So mashallah, uh, our uh, brother Abbas, he gives the azan here for Fajr. So inshallah, he should make dua for us, inshallah. Allah, I praise you and I seek your assistance that these Muslims that live in this totter down area, they establish prayer, they establish your deen. 
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told Bilal radiyallahu anhu, give the azan slowly and give the takbir fast. Keep a gap between the azan and iqamah. So if there's someone that's eating or someone that's drinking or someone's in the toilet, they can finish. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that until you don't see me, don't say the takbir. And put your index finger in your ear to make your voice loudly, to make your voice loud. You know, some people, they say, Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu, he couldn't pronounce Sheen. He used to say, Ashadu, the book I've been reading, says it's not true. He, he used to pronounce Ashadu properly. Once, what happened was, because he was originally from Habsha, some companions, they said, can someone else give the Azan? Someone else gave the Azan. Namaz was also performed. Jibreel alayhi salam came. And he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how come azan wasn't said? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, azan was said. Jibreel said, this Bilal, he gives the azan here, but his azan is heard in the heavens as well. Aashiqe Mustafa ki azame, Aashiqe Mustafa ki azame, Allah Allah kitna asar tha. Arsh wale bhi sunte the jisko wo azan thi azan bilali This was the azan and from again from this narration as well we can learn the virtues of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu When the conquest of Makkah took place Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered Sayyidina Bilal get on the roof of the Kaaba and give the azan and the polytheists that were watching they were really upset they were like, did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not find anyone else? And one of them said, my dad, he's so lucky that he's died before witnessing this day. One of them said, I wish I was dead like your dad. This is when this verse was revealed. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum min zakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. Who's the most honorable from among you? The one that's the most muttaqi, the one that's most pious. So we learn from this verse as well that deen doesn't look at the person's color. So Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu, he wasn't only the muaddin, he used to also make lots of announcements as well. So for example, if they were collecting money for, for a battle, he would be there making announcements or if there was some kind of uh, uh, restriction to visit the court of the Prophet wasallam, he would be there, he would say, okay, no one's allowed at this time. This was his job. Sayyiduna Bilal radiallahu anhu, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, make this announcement that only the mu'mineen will enter heaven. So he used to make these announcements. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Announce this as well that Allah can strengthen the deen through a fasiq, fajir, a sinner as well, disobedient. Here, the mufassirin and, and the ulama, they say that this is something that we need to reflect upon. Those that are, you know, Allah is taking the work of deen from these people. They need to ask themselves, that, are we sinners? They need to assess their Iman and they need to assess their Ikhlas and their sincerity as well. So upon occasion, the Muslims, they were traveling back to Mecca and they stopped by in a jungle to sleep. So in them days, there were, there were no hotels uh, or, or like uh, Premier Inn or anything like that. So they used to like make an announcement in the jungle and the animals, they would go away. So they rest in this jungle and it was Bilal anhu's duty to wake everyone up for Fajr but he went to sleep as well and they missed Fajr so Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said wake up wake up let's leave this place and then they stopped by in another place and uh, Azan Iqama was given and they made Qaza of the Fajr Namaz Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Bakr anhu. Shaitan came to Bilal and he put him to sleep like a mother puts her baby to sleep. When they heard 
when they called bilal and they said what happened he said the same thing and here abu bakr radiyallahu anhu he said ashhadu annaka rasulullah he said i bear witness that you are the messenger of allah to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now the companions they were upset because they missed the prayer prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if you go to sleep or if you forget your prayer when you wake up when you remember then make up make qaza so what we learn from this story is and this narration is that we should have someone to wake us up for fajr mashallah many brothers that come to the masjid for fajr so uh, if you need anyone to wake you up let them know inshallah we wake you up also what we learn from this narration is don't delay so look they only waited a couple of hours they didn't wait for the next day the next fajr they made up the fajr that same day so likewise we should do the same if there's a lot of you you're traveling then you can read your qaza with jamaat as well and also what we learn from this is if you miss your prayer you should be worried and you should be upset about it bilal radiyallahu anhu also he had access to the wealth of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if anyone came and uh, they were in need of wealth then it was bilal radiyallahu anhu that would provide for those individuals upon occasion bilal radiyallahu anhu he gathered many many dates for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for the needy and there were, there were quite a lot of them Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said spend bilal don't fear that they'll decrease also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to sayyiduna bilal ya bilal mut faqiran wa la tamut ghaniyan die as a poor individual don't die rich and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one month passed by upon me and bilal do you know how we spent this what we had to eat we had that less food that could be hidden in the armpit of bilal radiyallahu anhu so this is how they spent their days and nights and once he was in the court of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was eating and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said bilal come join me bilal radiyallahu anhu said i'm fasting prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said we're eating our sustenance and bilal's rizq is safe in heaven Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when there's food in front of someone that's fasting his bones they make tasbih angels they make istighfar for that individual so just quickly finishing off after the demise of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he moved to syria and uh, abu bakr radiyallahu anhu said don't don't move and he he said to abu bakr radiyallahu anhu if you freed me for yourself then don't let me go but if you freed me for allah then let me go so it was hard for him because he was reminded of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the time umar radiyallahu anhu went to syria he heard the azan of bilal radiyallahu anhu he started crying it reminded him of the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon occasion he saw the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his dream and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said how come you're not coming to visit us so he went running He went to the rosa of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he started crying sahaba said give the azan he said no but when hasan and husain radiyallahu anhum said give the azan when they said nashtahi an nasma azanak when they said that to him he gave the azan and it was fajr azan and women men they came running and they were crying and this reminded them of the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he passed away he had no kids he got married in in syria and when he was on his deathbed his wife was saying wa huzna what grief he was saying don't say that say what happiness wa farha i close my eyes and i see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said bilal keep a fast tomorrow you do sahri at home and you do iftar with me in heaven and this is what happened it was just before maghrib azan bilal radiyallahu anhu he left this dunya 20 hijri 20th muharram he was 63 years of age in damascus syria sayyiduna bilal radiyallahu anhu passed away may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him i i spoke and i paid my respects because we are in the month of muharram and uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the love of the companions and and wherever we can follow them may allah give us the ability to follow them amin ya rabbal alamin azan has been called out so the brothers are hamd of the sunnah to offer you sunnah